Hello, hello everyone. Back in the kitchen with, uh, you are back in the kitchen with uh, County For Real. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining my channel, my YouTube channel. So, thanks for being here today. So today I have a lesson. Uh, today uh, I want to just talk about a few things uh, uh, related to my previous video on uh, accounting information system. Just a few things. Uh, about the accounting information system and um, but first uh, I'm going to start with a few little things that I have on the stove so what I want to do I have my uh, water boiling right here and I have my grease getting hot I want to do a few little pieces of fried chicken uh, so this is my water boiling for my mashed potatoes so these are my potatoes my water is already boiling so I'm just going to put this down in here. So, my mashed potatoes. And this is my, uh, I use, uh, a lot of times I use this uh, canola uh, oil. It's um, pretty good for you. It says, uh, Cholesterol free. Uh huh. It says a cholesterol free, cholesterol free food. So I usually use that. And so what I do is my uh, I have my chicken wings. So. A lot of time, what I do is this is my uh, I have a little seasoned salt. So what I do sometimes, I just put a little, little seasoned salt on the uh, chicken, and uh, a lot of people put their chicken in the uh, refrigerator all night and let it let it marinate. But um, put my hair back a little bit. Uh, I don't do all that. I just Rinse my chicken off with some uh, cold water. Sprinkle my season seasoning salt on it, and then uh, I have my flour. And also, what I do sometimes too, I just have just a little flour. And sometimes I put my seasons seasoning right in the flour, right in my flour, and. And then I also have my, uh, these are some greens I already made. And what I'm going to do, I'll put some sour cream on those, on my greens, fresh greens I just made yesterday. Uh, so what I do, wash my hands. <laughs> Hands, put a little soap. So, so, um, so what I do, I usually just Chick my uh, flour, my season, I just get right down in it. Put my uh, see, I put my flour in there and just turn it over. I mean, put my chicken in there, just turn it over like that, and just turn it over like that, and then see as it comes out, put it on down in the pan, and then I just you know, put my, um, and once it's out popping, you know that it's ready. It's my second piece. I just stick that in there like that. I got, well, I have my, um, mashed potatoes, potatoes over there 
agora. chicken on and wash it off, wipe it off. So when the chicken gets done, I'll put on, you know, I'll put my piece on. So the mashed potatoes cook in. Chicken is fried. So um my plate and my, my plate and my fork so when it's time to turn right now I just let that slowly fry and I'll get on to my lesson okay so uh in my previous video uh I was talking about um uh building an accounting information system uh First, I want to start out with, in other words, you have a business, you run a business, uh, you have, uh, you know, you have your, your, your niche, your, you have your business name, first of all, you have your business name, you have your niche, you have your target market, uh, you know, you want to say your market, you might want to, um, you might want to, uh, you might want to, uh, target two or three different groups of people. So, in other words, you have that set, you know, you have your niche. You have a target market, you say you market, you might want to say, I want to market to uh, 20 year olds from 20 to 65, I want to market college students, I want to market male, I want to market uh, male time parts, I want to market um, from college students, I want to market male, male from 20 to 35, female, uh, whoever you want to target, you know, so that would be segment of your market, so you do that. You got your brand, you got your company name, you got your storefront, you got your online credit, and you begin to ask, oh, let me put a top on it. Let me put a top on it because it's beginning to pop. So, you have your target market, you have your, um, you have everything you need. So, 
everything you need to run your business. So you decide you want to do, you want to build a, an account and information system. So when you're building your account and information system, let's turn it down lower. So when you build, build your account and information system, uh, managers you also want to uh, be able, you know, managers and owners want to be able to, you know, see how the business is doing. I want to see, I'm the owner of the business. I want to see, uh, I want to see my account payables. I want to see my account receivable. So when you're doing an account and information system, uh, then as I said in my previous video, you may have, um, you want to decide whether you want, um, uh, you know, you want to build it, you want to build like a nice, uh, powerful computer system. So in other words, you can have an accounting information system. It could be, you can be just, uh, doing ledgers by paper, pen and paper. You can be doing ledgers, payrolls, and different things like that. But you can also build an accounting information system using, uh, technology. So in other words, you want to use technology. You want to be on a nice, you want to build a nice, powerful, strong, uh, huge, you know, computer information systems. You want to use mainframe, supercomputers, uh, many computers, microcomputers. But the idea is to be able to build that information system so you can bring that information in. You want to bring that information in to your organization because you need that information to make your decisions. Managers, uh, uh, business owners, you know, we, uh, we need that information. We need to make decisions. What, what type of decisions, uh, that we, you know, what, what type of decisions are we looking to make? There's so many decisions you never know. It's, um, sometimes decisions come up on, off of, you know, on spur of the moment. You might want to build, uh, you, uh, you might want to open up another business. In other words, you, you're already running one business, one or two. Uh, do we have enough, enough money to, you know, maybe open a branch in another state? So, you know, things like that. And then, uh, as managers and owners, as managers and owners, we want to see uh, how the business is doing. We want to see the accounts payable, the accounts receivable, uh, our cash account, uh, uh, all our payables, uh, uh, you know, interest payables, um, salary payables, but we have to pay our employees. So, and then I just have a few terms, too, that I want to just... Uh, Read up on. So, since we're dealing with uh, information and information systems, so in other words, we build the information system and managers want to see, uh, you know, the information. Once the county, the county department, uh, get all the paperwork done, they review all the, you know, reports and, uh, and, and the statements, the income statements, the balance sheet, statement of owners' equity, and then manager want probably want to overlook that uh, want to look at that information so sometimes when you have especially if you're an owner you're going to want to see your financial standpoint anyway so you you can have you can still you can have an accountant you have an accountant working in an accounting department but as an owner and a manager you still want to probably check behind uh you know the accounting department to see say you know you were saying hey I know you you working in a county department, but you know there's nothing wrong. So nothing wrong with the managers and the owners uh, looking over those that paperwork as well. So in other words, we have a we have a a, a county and information system, and we can use uh, information technology to build this system. So in other words, <coughs> um, we're building an information system. Uh, you want um, accurate information. You want accurate technology. Yeah, you want uh, the technology to be able to work. You want the proper uh, cable lines put in. You know, what, are you going to use fiber optic or coaxial cable? What kind of cable are you going to use? So, we have information systems. You'll have it. Then we have information technology. So, computer technology. It consists of hardware, software, processing and storing information, communication technology for translate transmitting information. So it's all about transmitting that information. Information is powerful. Just like they say knowledge is powerful, information is powerful. Because with the right information, you can get a lot of things done. But if you don't have the information on how to do this or how to do that, you lost 
you lost. You lost in the sauce. So, information systems organization. Organizational unit that has the primary responsibility for managing information technology. And then we have our knowledge worker. It's a new category of laborer for which information and knowledge are the new uh, raw materials of work, of the work. So in other words, we have knowledge workers. A new category for laborers, those are workers. So knowledge workers, to me, I guess they, uh, I guess those are the workers that are knowledgeable about a certain subject or a certain topic. They're knowledge workers. They're a new, a new category. They have a, a, a new category of laborer for which information and knowledge are the new raw materials of work. So in other words, raw materials is uh, something that's not, that's not finished. And then also, when you're building that information system, and then also you have information systems, you have information technology, then you have a management information system. So managers uh, need to gather uh, information too within the organization. Managers need that information within the organization. They need the financial information, and they need all sorts of information within the organization so they can make decisions. They have to make informed decisions based on the information that they have, trends in the market, and they make decisions based on their financial standpoint. And do we have enough money to, uh, we have enough funding in our business bank account to, say, open up a couple more stores, uh, 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 create a new product, put a new product on the marketplace. In other words, in the marketplace. So what if we're, we're uh, jeans manufacturer and we're making jeans or even we're just uh, selling jeans. But if we're making jeans, uh, do we want to know if we're selling stretch jeans? Uh, do we have enough information to coming in to our organization to say maybe create another type of jeans that we can put out on the market or the test, you know, I'll just test, test it in the market to see if it, how well it does in the market. Because a lot of times a uh, new market, I mean a new product, if you company put out new products and sometimes it doesn't, it, they, you know, they're not successful. But sometimes you have to test them test the market to see, hey, you know, uh, are they ready for this? So that's how it is. So, and then we also have, uh, when we're dealing with information systems, management information systems, accounting information systems, any type of information system that you want to build within your organization is very vital to how, when, and where you bring in the information that you need within the organization so you can make your, uh, vital and important decisions. Also, we can, uh, companies, uh, organizations have teams. So in other words, we have teams that work together and also put in that, uh, bring together that uh, important information in, a, in an organization. So we have self-managed work teams. Self-managed work teams are groups of employees who perform highly related or interdependent jobs and take on many other responsibilities uh, cross-functional team made up of employees from about the same hierarchical level. They said, but from different work uh, areas. And then we also have, we also have virtual teams. Uh, virtual teams, virtual teams use computer technology to tie together physically dispersed members in order to achieve a common goal. It allows people to collaborate online using communication makes like wide Wide, um, what they say, wide over, over uh, wired over networks, video conferences, or even, uh, even if, uh, even if you're in another continent. Oh, okay. So in other words, a virtual team. In other words, uh, you have a worker, and somebody may be working in Europe, somebody working in Africa, somebody working in Washington D.C. So you have a virtual team, so you don't have to be right in the same location. So in other words, that's see what technology is very powerful. Uh, virtual teams use computer technology to tie together physically uh, dispersed members in order to achieve a common goal. So in other words, you're working on a goal for your organization and you have uh, a work team, but they're in different locations, so they still can get stuff done. So, 
Oh, she's brown and real nice. She's brown and real nice. I let it brown a little bit more on the side. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Brown and real nice. We been yet? Okay, so let's say she's still browning. Um. So we have the self managed team. Oh, then we also uh, said virtual teams. In other words, you're working at a company and you can see, you can you can't see, but you um, you know, you're working at another location from one of your uh, you know your coworkers. In other words, you can. In other words, you're working on the same project. Uh, you're working on the same company project, a company assignment, but you're in a different location. So that's how you're gonna get that project finished. Then we have a uh, video conferencing. We have video conferencing. Video conferencing is an extension of intranet or extranet. See, in, intranet is a internet. <clears throat> it's an internet within an organization. And then you have your internet. So you have internet and you have extranet system. So extranet outside of the organization. You have an internet outside of the organization. You have an intranet within the organization. And then you have the regular internet, internet that is worldwide. Internet that means it's like international, international <coughs> networks, networks connected to networks. Uh, it permits uh, an intranet and an extranet. It permits employees and organizations to have meetings with people at different locations. So we have our virtual team. We have our uh, video conferencing. In other words, uh, you can have your computer, you can have your phone. You can do a video conferencing. You can, uh, uh, video conferencing. You can really see the person. You can talk to the person and see the person through your TV or uh, through your uh, computer or your phone. And you are in, you know, you're in a different location. So it says live audio and video images of members allow um, them to see, hear, and talk with each other. Video conferencing technology, in effect, allows employees to conduct interactive meetings without the ne necessity of all physically uh, being in the same location. So in other words, you in, you in, um, you know. You're in Canada, or you're in Europe, or you're somebody in Washington, D.C., or somebody somewhere else. And video conferencing is very important. It's very, very, it's a very good technology to be a part of. So that's a video, video conferencing. And um, so let's see, I think that was it for that one. So then I want to just touch base on a... Just a couple of things that I had. Oh, let me talk about just a couple. This goes with the workforce too. Then I have another term called workforce diversity. So workforce diversity means that organizations are becoming a more heterogeneous mix of people in terms of gender, age, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, value, ethical behavior, loyalty is what a diversity brings to the workforce. Uh, teams make product. Teams make products, provide services, negotiate deals, coordinate projects, offer advice, and make decisions. So in other words, a uh, diverse workforce and you're in a team, in other words, you're working for an organization. Say for instance, we are, you know, I have my business, Cheryl's, um, Cheryl's uh, Tub and Towel business, LLC, and I have, I built, I'm building my information system. Uh, building my information systems for my business. Uh, I want to, you know, I have my niche, my target market. I have, I'm trying to build my brand. I have all my employees, and I have um, a diverse work. I have a diverse work workforce within my company, and I'm building a team. So when those teams work together, they bring their diversity together. They bring their skills, their knowledge, uh, uh, expertise. They bring all that to the team, and I think that's a good thing to work in teams. So it said teams make products, provide services, negotiate deals, coordinate projects, offer the, offer advice, and make decisions. And they solve problems. So then we have the problem-solving team. We discuss ways of improving quality 
efficiency, and the work environment. Then we have a uh, self-managed uh, uh, work teams. They groups of they are groups of employees who perform highly related or interdependent jobs and take on many of the responsibilities of their former supervisors. In other words, workforce diversity is very important. We have to learn to get along. We share our uh, expertise, knowledge, uh, skills. Put all that together. That 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 is a haven for profit, uh, production. I mean, you know, production productive. I would say the company would be more productive because everybody working together. We putting all the skills. We putting all our skills together. We're working together. We have knowledge. Because somebody might have, uh, in other words, you're working in teams. Somebody might be good with uh, word processing. Somebody might be good with typing. Somebody might be good with uh, writing a report. Somebody might be good with, uh, you know, maybe the reports, the counties, accounts receivables, accounts payables. Somebody might be good at all that, just putting that down on paper. Somebody might be good at doing the journals and, you know, you do it, you do your little, like your little trial balances and stuff like that. And then before you get to the, before you submit your paperwork to the accounting department, you can always do a trial run of your account, you know, your accounts receivables, your accounts payables, your uh, whatever business processes you want to take a look at. And there's nothing wrong with doing a trial run. So when we put that expertise together with those diverse teams, so, so that's that one. That is that one. So information technology, I talked about that one. Oh, then also we have, uh, in other words, when we're doing all of that, there's nothing wrong with also having a strategic information system. So we have an accounting information system. We have a managerial, uh, managerial information uh, system. And then we have a strategic. So we have accounting information system, managerial information system, and a strategic information systems. So a strategic information system, they are inter-organizational system plans that help companies improve processes, reach future goals, and set steps in place to achieve a particular outcome or result. And uh, they coordinate activities. So strategic information system is, strategic information system is just like a plan. That's just like being in a planning stage. The strategic is strategic, it's the strategy is the plan. That is your plan. What is your plan for the company? What do you want the company to be doing in the next five years? So in other words, we're building this accounting information system. Uh, we want our make it plural, an accounting information system. Because we have, say for instance, in my company, Cheryl, Tub and Tile, I have a hundred, I have a hundred office buildings. And um, I have, uh, Three, four thousand employees. So I need something like this strategic information system. I need a strategic information system, a managerial information system, and an accounting information system. So when I put all that together, and then I have my team set up, I, put, uh, I have a diverse team set up to help me with my accounting information system. And I'm the owner of the uh, these businesses. I have this thing that would be wonderful, you know, to own something like that. A hundred, a hundred uh, office buildings, uh, four or five thousand employees, and then um, so we need these. These terms are very important. So these are like book terms, but I guess when you get in the real world, working around it, sometimes a lot of people don't go by the book. But I learned a lot from the book, from my book, my book knowledge. Uh, then we have. Um, Okay, I think that was the last one on that one. That's virtual learning concern with the management of main memory. Okay, this stuff, this is about the computer. I have, I have on here virtual memory. It's concerned with the management of main memory. Permits multi-programming to operate more efficiently. So in other words, if you're building your information system, you still might have to, in other words, you, when you're building, uh, I'm building my information system for my company, I want to deal with uh, information technology. So information system, it doesn't have to be uh, technology, but in this sense, in this sense, I want to use, I'm using technology. I have a hundred office buildings. I have a hundred, I have a hundred uh, offices, but I have about 40 or 50 buildings, but I have about a hundred offices. 
and uh, building uh, an information system using technology. So I'm, I'm touching base with my information technology uh, team. So they're gonna be the ones that deal with the virtual memory because they're gonna be set. They're gonna be setting up my uh, information systems. So I'm concerned with the management of main memory permits multi-programming to operate more efficiently. So that's that one. And then also, uh, as I said in my previous video, uh, when uh, when I had my team together and they're building my uh, my information system system, they're building my systems. I'm making it plural because I have about 100 offices, 50 or 60 buildings. I have about 100 buildings. Say this is I have 100 buildings and I have about 50 or 60 offices. I got office space and I need my computer. I need my computer information system to be built at a certain time, certain place, certain area of each uh, office. But I, you know, I show up my office space. So then I have to know whether or not it's going to be wireless or wired. So in other words, as I was talking about yesterday, um, nine times out of ten, I would, you know, I would have um, probably both wireless and wired. So then I want to probably deal with my uh, my bridges, my routers, my browsers, uh, my gateways. So now with bridges, bridges connect two LAN, two LAN local area network, or LAN segments together when the LANs use the same protocol or rules. So then we have our gateways connects two or more local area networks and forward the messages as needed. And then I have my switches. They connect more than two LAN or, or local area network segments that use the same protocol. So we got the bridges, the switches, the gateways. So in other words, this will be for my network team. And also another one I uh, research too with the T1 lines. You have the T1 lines, those are the least lines. Uh, high transmission rates, 1.544 MPBS uh, uses uh, multiplex, multiplexes at each end to combine a number of data streams uh, less than 1.544 MPBS. Uh, four T1 lines combined to create a T2 trunk with capacity of 6.312 uh, megabits per second. I guess that's, a, that's what that is. M MVPS, mega, megabits per second. Uh, but T2 trunks have largely been, been bypassed in favor of T, uh, T3 trunks, consisting of, consisting of seven T2s with a data transmission capacity nearly 45 megabits per second. Okay, so I think that was the last one on that one. And then uh, we have our fiber optic. Uh, I was talking about this in my previous video. I think fiber optic seems like the uh, most popular because I believe the fiber optic is saying that it doesn't have any electricity going through the line. So it said the newest transmission medium, transferring data by pulses. Transferring data by pulses of light, that's fiber optic. Uh, through a thin fiberglass or fused silica, a light pulse can signal a, a bit, a one bit, while the absence of a pulse signals a zero bit. Takes, you know, the computers are zeros and ones, so it's digital. So computers are digital, zeros and ones, then you have your, uh, your telephone, I guess that's analog signals. Optical transmission system requires three components, the light source, Either LED, LED light emitting diode or a laser diode, the fiber optic cable itself, and a detector. The speeds in fiber optic are faster than the other, other media, and the space requirement very small in diameter. So in other words, they say the fiber optic is faster. In other words, that's why when you when you um, uh, sign up for Comcast or Verizon, they ask you what type of um, you know, they, you sometimes ask you what, what are you going to be doing? You know, are you working from home? Are you multitasking? So they want to know um, how fast a bit of an internet do you need? So, you know, what are you going to be doing? Are you going to be working from home? Are you multitasking? Are you just logging on to the internet? Or, 
What are you doing? Do you need a real fast internet? So my internet is pretty fast. So when I click on it, uh, when I click on the um, Internet Explorer, it comes right up. So those are the things you, you know, they'll ask you usually when you'll get the internet. How fast? So in other words, how fast you need the internet depending on what are you doing? Uh, you have a lot of assignments you need to get done at a certain time. So it will determine the, you know, the type of speed that you need when you're signing up for your internet service. So yeah, fiber optic cables are highly reliable because they are not affected by power line surges, uh, electromagnetic interference or corrosive uh, chemicals in the air. Telephone companies use fiber optic in their long distance telephone lines and lines connecting central office sites to terminals located in subdivisions. So a lot of I knew because um, I knew that because um, when I went to the you know the Comcast website, that's all you see on there. They tell you they tell you what they use fiber optic uh, fiber optic cables. Uh, then it says uh, then a hub. You have your most people have their you know a certain a separate closet and there's nothing in the closet but the hub. It's a hub closet. So a hub is a simple device where one section of a local area network is connected to another. In other words, you have a hub and your wires, the wires are in the hub, that's how they connect the internet. The hubs forward every message they receive to other sections of the local area network, whether or not they need to go there. A hub forward every a hub forwards every message they receive to other sections of the LAN, local area network. So I thought about getting me a hub one time. I thought about getting one. So then the next one I have. Okay, I don't want to talk about that yet. Okay, the next one I have. Let's talk a little bit about uh, file transfer protocols. This package is designed to transfer files from one computer system to another. So. Uh, file transfer protocol. Protocols are just the basically the rules and the regulations. So a lot of these terminology, a lot of these terminology, um, a lot of these terms, rather I would say terminology, a lot of these terms in the my computer um, network networking book. It's all a lot of terms and they are related to uh, protocol. In other words, how protocol the rules and regulations of how just like the um. When I was talking about um, bridges and routers and browsers, and all those uh, terms are predicated on protocols. So, in other words, they have a certain rule of how they are, uh, how they go about. In other words, you know how you get your messages. In other words, when you type on a computer, it's the routers and the routers and the bridges and all that. That's just giving you an explanation of what happens once you hit those keys on the keyboard and these terms like file transfer, uh, bridges, routers, routers, they're giving you the internal terminology. So that's getting real technical. Because a lot of times when people hit the keys and they type, they don't know how information is circulating through the computer. So that's why I like to read up on these terms because they're very important. So, uh, and then also I have something here too called database management system. Database management system is support software that is used to create, manage, and protect organizational data. So in other words, data management system, um, I mean, it's in the term. You're managing your data. You have a data management system. You have accounting information system. It has a, it's almost a system for everything. You have an accounting information system, a manager, a uh, managerial information system, uh, and the other one I had, we had a strategic information system, and now we have a database management system. So the database is a shared collection of logically related data organized to meet the needs of an organization. So we all need data. All In all our organizations, we need data. We need data, we need information. So basically, I think it starts out as data, and then once you cipher through the data and put in match everything up and turn it into information. So in other words, data can be just a lot of things that don't match. A lot of, a lot of uh, terminology, a lot of sentences, a lot of paragraphs, it can be data that doesn't match. But once you cipher that data, 
and you organize that data and turn it into information that you can print out. So that's what I learned in school. And then we have, um, I think there's, uh, so let me check on my, let me check on my uh, chicken to see if it's browning. I have it on low, so what I'll do is keep browning. Keep browning, do it. Uh -huh. So once I finish, uh, oh yes, you're browning real good there. I let it brown. Turn it down. So let me take a little. We can do something right. Make it all dry. Okay. So while I'm waiting on my chicken to get done, oh, I need some water. I'm thirsty. All this talking. So, mm -hmm. bottle of water. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, So let me see where I stopped off. Okay, so another way it says, um, in other words, you have, um, so we have a company, we have our company, I have my company, I have my employees, I have, um, um, my leadership, my managers, my managers are, uh, my managers are employees, they are employees, it's, uh, they they help my employees, uh, they influence the employees to reach for their goals uh, and achieve a future vision. So we have that. We have um, target market, building a brand. Uh, so the next one we want to talk about is, uh, okay, I think I finished that one. All right, let's talk. I want to talk a little bit about uh, what is organizational behavior. Organizational behavior. Each person brings a highly subjective lens to work every day, and it is important to understand the difference. Organization in the organizational behavior field of study, uh, it's, it's, it's usually an investigation that creates the impact on individuals, groups, Groups and it has a structure on behavior within organizations for purpose of applying such knowledge toward improving an organization's effectiveness. So, in other words, organizational behavior, I look at that as similar to your culture. I talked about uh, organizational culture, uh, corporation. I talked about corporate culture uh, in one of my videos. So, I look at organizational behavior as, you know, sort of like a similar term, you No, know, what kind of culture are you creating? Are you creating a culture um, within an organization that's positive, friendly, uh, norm, the normal, I mean, a positive norm. Uh, your norm and your corporation might be different than uh, another corporation's norm. Their norm can be uh, they let people come in late, they lie, they steal, they cheat. And they, I mean, that could be their norm, but your norm in your organization could be positive, it could be effective, efficient, it could be, it could be beautiful, it could be just, you know, you're honest, you're ethical. In this organization, this is just some examples that I'm giving, I'm just making an example. So organizational behavior, it says each person brings a highly subjective lens to work every day. So in other words, you bring in a highly subjective lens in organizational behavior, in other words, uh, how do you see things? In other words, this person might say, this person might be used to lying, and this person might not. So when they come to work, they see things 
through a different lens. They they have they feel a certain way about certain things. You might feel a different way. In other words, what are you bringing? What are you bringing to the organization? It says uh, each person brings a highly subjective lens to work every day. So in other words, uh, the cold water. See, organizational behavior, a field of study that investigates the impact of individual groups and structure have on behavior. So in other words, when you're working in an organization, and just uh, what I was previously talking about, uh, working in teams. Uh, each team member, you're looking at things in a different uh, in a different light. You're, you're looking at through, looking at it through a different lens. Everybody has their, you know, especially in different cultures. You you know, how was you raised? You was raised different. You were raised different than uh, your co one of your coworkers. You all you know, you raised differently sometimes, and you may think differently. I mean, your culture, your religion, your uh. How, you know, where you see things, how you do things. You know, so I look at organizational behavior similar because how do you behave in, within your organization? I mean, I assume that is uh, rules and regulations in each organization. You know, you can't, in other words, you can't come in late. You know, you have to be on time. Or if you're late, if you have an excuse, then sometimes some companies may, some companies real strict on a lot of this stuff. They are... Uh, they may let you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some companies may let you go, but some companies may say, look, I allow you to be late just one time, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I allow you to be late, but, you know, that's it. And um, so, let's see. Okay, that's that one. Okay, managers. I think I only have a couple more things to talk about. Managers. In other words, uh, I'm running a business. I have my manager. My business, like I said, I have, uh, I have uh, my workers. They're about to do my. Um, I have my workers, and they are about to, uh, you know, build my uh, information system. Uh, this is what I had. Uh, I think I had this in my previous video. This is my uh, cottage cheese with pineapples. So I am hungry. The food ain't ready yet. My food's not ready yet, but I'm going to eat me some of this. So, what it is, is uh, I have, I mixed my, uh, my hood. I had another one of these. Uh, too good, but this a plain one. Mm -hmm. But this one right here, I mixed it, my one, I just wanted here that had, uh, uh, peaches in it. So, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I have peaches in it. Uh, um, so, um, so I said, um, so in other words, manager's job. Okay, so I say, uh, manager's. I don't know if I have my managers and they're working in, uh, managers in, managers in my organization, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, uh, uh, um, I'm getting an accounting information system built. I have my strategic information system, my managerial information system, and I have my accounting information system. So then I was eating on the other one, the previous one I had, that was a database information system. So in other words, managers, they're responsible for internal um, decisions within an organization. So managers, in other words, when I need, when I'm, when I'm, when, why they're building, I have my workmen, they're building my accounting information system. I expect my manager to be there and see exactly what's going on. So that way, I, me as an owner, um, as an owner, so when I, get, when I talk to my managers, uh, when I talk to my managers, how many managers I have, I want to be able to uh, get the necessary information that I need. 
So I expect my manager, or my managers, it might be plural, because I have a hundred, I have a, I have a, about 50, I have 50 buildings, but I have probably about 100 managers, something like that. Just something I'm making up. So I expect my managers to, you know, to be over there to oversee, to be in my, to be in uh, the building, oversee what these uh, uh, networking professionals are doing. And I expect them to, uh, to be able to uh, contact me, let me know. When I come in, I want to be able to say, hey, you know, I expect the manager to have a report, the reports. So we can see exactly what uh, this information system is looking like. Are they doing what they're supposed to do? Um, run by the um, um, So somebody has to, uh, yeah, so let me finish this. I think I only have two more class. Um, so manager's job within a corporation. Okay, we have Hershey, Hershey and Blanchard's uh, situational theory. This model of situational leadership. So in other words, like I said, I have my managers. And when I'm not available, they want to oversee uh, the uh, um, networking professionals while they're doing my information system. So the managers have to lead, organize, control, and just monitor. They have to monitor. Uh, they know their job. Managers get things done through people. So in other words, the employees, certain employees are in this team doing this. I might have some employees in this team doing that. And so while, while the company, the, uh, the professionals, the networking professionals are working on my information system, I expect for the managers to be on top of their game and report back to me, have their reports ready, so I can see exactly what's going on. And because I'm the owner of the business. So I said, Hersey, Hersey and Blanchard's situational theory. This model, this model of situational theory, it has been incorporated into leadership training programs at over 400, excuse me, uh, uh, 500 companies and more than 1 million managers a year. It says, um, from a wide variety of organizations are being, uh, it says are being, uh, this looks like, uh, Tang, tangled, tangled in its basic element. So in other words, uh, it's uh, these two gentlemen, Hersey and Blancard, situation theory. In other words, they have a situational theory model. This was in a book. This was in a book that I have. Uh, I think this book right here. This book right here. Uh, This book right here, Managing and Organizing People. So that's why I got uh, these two gentlemen named right here from that. So in other words, they, they just had a leadership theory uh, that they're saying that um, the theory is, what they did, they did like a little training thing and they had um, 400, 400 of the uh, Fortune 500 companies and more than 1 million managers a year from a wide variety of organizations. In other words, they did like a little uh, objective objective test and they, they they test it's sort of like a survey and um they so looked at 500 companies and over 400 over 400 um uh, 4500 uh no 500 companies and more and one million managers a year so in other words they just did a little survey on the managers in uh, about 500 4500 companies and they just said they didn't they didn't get the results and then I have another gentleman called uh, Fedler. They call it the Fedler model, LPC. He did a questionnaire as well. It said um, his questionnaire contains sets of 16 contrasting objectives, such as pleasant, unpleasant, unpleasant, efficient, inefficient, uh, open guarded, supportive. And it asked the respondent, it's like a survey. Uh, so in other words, how well do you know your, they want to know how well do you know your manager? Is he a good leader? So that's a, that's a question. Is he a good leader? Can he communicate with his subordinates? So Fedler, the Fedler model. And the other one was the Hersey and Blanchard's. They had their own model. 
they had the situation on theory. So Fender has the uh, LPC questionnaire. And uh, so it said it asks responders to think of all the co-workers they have ever had and to describe the one person they least enjoy working with by rating him or her on a scale of one to eight for each of the 16 sets of contrasting objectives. So he had this little questionnaire and he wanted the people to say to lay claim, you know, um, you work, you know, you work with several employees. Which one were, which one did you, you know, it said, which one said responders to think of all the coworkers they have ever had and describe the one person they least enjoy working with. The person, one person they least enjoy working with. I know a lot of times you work on these jobs and you might, you might not like everybody you work with. So, and Fedler, he proposes that effective, Effective group performance depends on the proper match between the leader's style and, and the degree to which the situation gives control to the leader. And it said the theory that effective groups depend on a proper, uh, a proper match between a leader's style of interacting with subordinates and the degree to which the situation gives control to the leader. So it's a model for leadership, comprehensive, comprehensive contingency model for leadership. So it proposes that effective group performance depends on the proper match between the leader style and the degree to which the situation gives control to the leaders. The theory that effective groups depend on the proper match between the leader style of interacting with the subordinates. So in other words, how will, in other words, the manager, I guess the manager would be a leader. So in other words, how will the, this manager or these managers interact with their subordinates? Are they great leaders? Are they motivating? Uh, are they motivating, controlling, and uh, uh, what, more motivating, controlling, and I guess overseeing these employees and making sure uh, they are, um, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. Because sometimes you may have a manager that may let some people just, you know, get by and not doing what they're supposed to do. And they see and don't see. But it says it proposes that effective, effective group performance depends on the proper match between the leader style. In other words, what style of, in other words, you hire these managers, what style of leadership do they have? Are they effective, efficient? Are they getting things done? Managers get things done to people, but are they getting the things done that they need to get done? In other words, I had my company, I had this management, I had this um, accounting information system, systems that I want my uh, managers to oversee while I'm not around. So are uh, my managers doing what they're supposed to do? Are they interacting with the subordinates, with the employees below them when the owner is not around? So are they, do, are they effective, efficient leaders? So are they effective, are they getting things done? And efficient means... Are they getting things done at low at a low cost? So as managers, so so we had the Fedler model, and then it's the Hersey Hersey and Blanchard's uh, situational theory. So these two are dealing with, uh, in other words, working in an uh, organization. That's why I had the term organization organizational behavior. So all these are related. So I think that was the last term. Let's see, this is a uh, Oh yeah, because that was a, it was called the least preferred coworker questionnaire. So that's something else. And that type of thing, I don't know. That almost like seems to me like that could make also enemies within the organization. Long as there were the uh, results don't get out to the employees. It says uh, uh, at least the, the least preferred coworker questionnaire contains sixteen contrasting. Adjectives such as pleasant, unpleasant, efficient, inefficient, open-guarded, supportive, hostile. It asks responders to think of all the co-workers they have ever had and to describe the one person they least enjoy working with by rating him or her on a scale of one to eight. Each of the 16 sets uh, sets for contrasting uh, adjectives. So that is something else. So what, you know, as long as the results do not get out, so I think that was it. Oh, uh, I think that was it. Let me see. Yeah, that was a situational leadership. This was a contingency theory that focuses on uh, followers, successful leadership, 
uh, is achieved by selecting the right leadership style. Uh, Hersey, Hersey and Blanchard, they argued. Hersey and Blanchard contended on the level of the following readiness. Oh, then I have one more, and it's called the Path, the Path Goal Theory. And this is by, so I have um, Paul Hersey and Ken, uh, Ken Blanchard. We have the leadership model. And then I have uh, Fetner, the comprehensive contingency model for leadership. And then we have the last one I have is Robert House, the Path Goal Theory. So the table's cooking. Uh, uh, Paul, no, I have oh, Paul Hersey and Ken Blanchard, the Situational Leadership Contingency Theory. And then I have Paul, I have uh, Robert House, uh, the uh, Robert House, the Path Goal Theory. Uh, the path goal theory assists in attaining, it helps manage, it basically managers supposed to help uh, the followers attain their goals and to provide the necessary direction and support to ensure that their goals are compatible with the overall objective uh, and group of the organization. So in other words, are your managers, are, your man, are the managers uh, leading, controlling, and uh, helping, in other words, uh, encouraging the employees to, uh, you know, the employees and their teams and the groups to uh, uh, obtain the overall goals and the objective of the organization. So that's what that's what this was about. Uh, managers doing what they're supposed to do, help um, the uh, you know the subordinates uh, reach reach their goals reach their goals and uh, objectives in the organization. So in other words, when you when employees come to work, they have a job to do. What 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 are they supposed to do? Are they completing their job? Is the manager uh, encouraging and motivating and guiding and leading in the right way? So in other words, what is the manager's leadership style? Some managers, I mean, most managers that I came across, like sometimes when you go in a store like CVS and uh you know, Target, Walmart, you may see the managers on the floor, so they seem like they have pretty good leadership style, but you don't really know them. So that's what this was about, talking about the uh, leadership style. So I think that was the last, I think that was the last one. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is, um, uh, I think I talked. I think I got a uh, yeah leadership communication. So I think I talked about all of these. So I think that was the last one for the day class. So just to touch base again on um just to touch base on um let me check my chicken again. I'm gonna turn it back up. So. It's still got a brown, see, class? It's still browning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, just to reiterate, uh, class, um, uh, so this is just uh, I still have my I still got a little food. I like it. I like um I like it, but it just to me it don't have enough food. I guess you could buy your own food and more food to it. But okay, just to uh, wrap things up. Okay, I have my niche, my target market, my uh, my niche, my target market, the name of my business. I'm doing all last uh, business. I'm doing. I'm doing storefront, and um, you know, I have my team. I have my uh, uh, networking professionals. They're building this uh, information system. Uh, they build. They're building the information system for me in my s several offices. I have certain, you know, certain amount of buildings, and I. So um, my manager. I just expect my managers to be. Be there and lead, organize and control, and 
make sure that the employees are doing their job and the managers, you know, what type of leader style do your managers have? So that was some of the uh, information that I pulled out of my reading and uh, managing, um, organizing and managing people uh, textbook. So what is the leadership style of your manager? Mm -hmm. So class, I'm going to close on that note today. And I'm going to finish off. I have my potatoes, potatoes here. They're boiling. Uh, um, uh, cheers. Thanks for joining me today, class. Got my chicken fried over here.
uh, 10 million. I want a 10 million to come out of my cash account. So I want to create my cash account 10 million. So I'm paying for that uh, accounting information system. And then I wanted to, um, I want to debit my owner's equity account because it's going to come out with the owner's equity. And then also my withdrawal, 10 million. I can debit, I can debit my withdrawals account, 10 million. Yep. So, also, it could be, it depends on the accounting department. It could, and it could be an expense. So, if I say I'm paying 10 million for my accounting information system, uh, it's going to be plural systems. Because I'm going to need, I have a certain amount of buildings. I have, uh, 50 buildings, but I have about 100 offices, and I need an information system in these buildings. How much are they going to, uh, not these, yeah, these buildings, in, in each building, in each office. So, that can be considered as an expense as well. $10 million. So, I can say, I could debit my expense account, $10 million. So, that's still going to come out with my own equity. Mm -hmm. So, the accounting department will probably handle that, but it's definitely an expense. Most expenses are yeah, your rent, your utilities, you got to pay your employees, so those are expenses too. So usually when you pay the expenses, you debit your expense account once they're paid. So class, I want to say thanks for joining me today. And uh, thanks for joining me today. And I hope you enjoy this lesson. I hope you enjoy this lesson. So, so this is just my plate, uh, chicken. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining me today. And I want to say, I'll see you back here, same place, same time, same channel. And you all have a good one.